So, in my last lecture, I uh, discuss the basic mathematical modeling of reliability. Okay. So, what is uh, reliability function and how do we model mathematically? These things are discussed in my last lecture. Okay. And finally, we got that for a system having constant failure rate, this uh, we got uh, this expression that mean time to failure already defined is coming out to be 1 upon this lambda, where lambda is the constant failure rate and this mean time to repair is 1 upon mu, where mu is the constant repair rate. Okay. And for any type of component which is repairable, which is repairable, uh, there uh, exist a number of cycle of failure and repair. Uh, so, basically there is a constant period of time uh, by which this system will operate at healthy condition. Then after that it will uh, suffer from some fault and it needs maintenance or repair. So, there is a some period of time where it will undergo maintenance or repair okay. and then after that it will again operate at healthy condition for a considerable time okay, before it uh, suffers from another fault or another failure. So, there is a cycle exist which is basically sum of this mean time to failure and mean time to repair. So, what is mean time to failure? Mean time to failure is basically if you sum up and take the average of all this duration uh, for all the cycles for a particular component during which the component operates uh, satisfactorily or components uh, was in healthy condition. Okay. So, this is called MTTA for mean time to failure and mean time to repair is basically uh, if you sum up all the repair duration uh, and take the average and mean of that, this will represent this mean time of repair. And mean time of repair and mean time of failure, if you add these two, arithmetically add these two, then what you will get? You will get a uh, cycle that is represented by this capital T, which is called mean cycle time. Okay these things I discussed in my last lecture. So, mean cycle time is basically equal to it is a basically sum up or summation of mean time to failure and mean time to repair. Okay. Now, if we represent this mean time to failure with a constant failure rate that is lambda. So, we already got this expression for mean time to failure would be equal to 1 upon lambda. Similarly, since this mu is representing this repair rate, it is not repair duration. So, it is repair rate that means that much of repair per a given time. So, then from that you can find out this mean time to repair that is r bar. So, here bar is representing this bar is representing mean value of mean value of different cycles. So, these cycles already I explained in this particular slide. So, this is a typical cycle. So, during which this component was up and down. Similarly, this is another cycle. Okay. So, this is another cycle which consists of some duration during which it was in up during this duration and some duration during which it was under maintenance one particular component was under maintenance this is applicable for a two state model already i discussed in my last lecture okay now if you sum up all this duration so this t1 stands for basically uh, the summation of the time uh, for which this component was up plus component was down okay so this m1 is basically representing the duration which this system uh, or component was uh, operated satisfactorily or it was in up condition. Okay. And similarly, we have in different cycle different values of m, this duration may change 
uh, for example, from here to here you can see duration has changed and then further it has changed, it has increased and so on. Okay. Now, if you take this m values and if you take the average of that, that is basically representing this mean time to failure that is MTTF, okay, which is explained here. Now, similarly, this mean time to repair, uh, if you take this r values and take the average of this, then whatever you will get that will represent this mean time to repair and this summation of this mean time to failure and mean time to repair will give you mean time between failures uh, that is MTBF and also it gives a average time or mean cycle time. Okay. So, mean cycle time is basically represented as uh, here capital T bar means it is a mean value. Similarly, here uh, this m bar means it is the mean value of all m. Similarly, uh, this r bar represents the mean value of all r, okay? r 1, r 2, r 3 and whatever r are there uh, for a um, overall these cycles. Okay? Now, we can represent this mean cycle time as a function of this failure rate and repair duration similar to this and we will get this expression. Okay. Now, as you know, if we take the reciprocal of this mean cycle time, then it will give you mean failure frequency. It will give the mean failure frequency. Frequency as you know, it is 1 upon this time period. So, it is uh, 1 upon this t bar, this should be t bar and uh, this expression for f bar is in terms of this uh, or in as a function of lambda and mu is given at this expression. It is simply the reciprocal of 1 upon t bar. Now, we will also discuss about two important aspect, one is called availability, another is unavailability of a particular component. Okay. Now, which type of component will have some period of availability and some period of unavailability? Of course, uh, those components which are repairable, which are repairable, okay. because as you know in power system or power distribution system, we use several components, some of them are repairable, some of them are non-repairable. Okay. Now, for repairable components, we need maintenance or repair. For uh, non-repairable components, we need replacement. Okay, all right. Now, how do you uh, model this availability and unavailability? So here, availability is defined as the fraction of time the component is up or healthy. Okay, so availability is defined as the fraction of time any component is up or healthy. Okay. And unavailability which is simply that uh, complement of this availability which obviously represents the fraction of time the component is in down or under repair. Okay. So, here availability is fraction of time the component is in healthy condition or operating satisfactorily and unavailability is the fraction of time the component is down. Since both are fraction, uh, that means their values will lie in between 0 to 1. So, if you sum up these two uh, component, one is fraction of time this component was available and fraction of time the component was unavailable, this will represent 1. Okay. So, here capital A is representing this availability of any component and capital U is representing unavailability of a particular component. Okay. And uh, as you know, component either would be available or would be unavailable. Okay. So, they have this type of binary relationship. So, either any component can be operational, can be at operational mode or at under repair. Okay. There is nothing in between that. So, this is called two state model, where we have two states of a particular uh, uh, component, one is up state, another is down state. Up state is uh, uh, also called as healthy state and down state is also called as uh, repair state. Okay. All right. Now, uh, as I said, it can be uh, in two state model or assumption is that a component is either up 
or down. Okay. So, up means it is at healthy condition or it is available for the operation, down means it is under repair or it is unavailable for operation. Okay. So, so, you can understand this availability and unavailability uh, both are complement to each other uh, that means, one system or one component would be either available or unavailable. Okay. Now, we can represent this availability function as a function of this mean time to failure and mean time to repair. Okay. So, for a uh, two state model you can see for example, here. So, during this period uh, this system was available. So, these are the time periods for which the systems are available. available. Similarly, these are the periods for which the systems are unavailable. So, these are the periods for which the system was unavailable or component was unavailable. So, availability period is function of this m and unavailability period is function of r. Okay. So, we can represent this availability function it is equivalent to mean value of m or mean time to fault or mean time to failure divided by this uh, mean time cycle, okay, which is called as also called as MTBF. Okay. Similarly, this uh, mean time cycle we know it is uh, summation of uh, mean time to failure plus mean time to repair like this and we can represent this availability in this form. Now, we can replace this m bar by 1 upon lambda that is failure rate and r bar is 1 upon mu that is repair rate. If you replace this uh, in this equation, this will give you this uh, expression that is availability is equal to mu divided by lambda plus mu. So, this uh, equation is applicable when a system will have constant failure rate or repair rate. So, this is for constant failure rate or repair rate. Okay. So, once you get this availability as we know the unavailability is 1 minus this availability function. So, unavailability represents the fraction of time the component will be unavailable, okay. so which is equal to 1 minus a. Uh, so, this is uh, you can put simply that uh, a value is uh, m bar divided by m bar plus r bar. So, which will give you this value and this is nothing but mean time to repair divided by mean cycle time. Okay. And similarly, you represent this uh, r bar by 1 upon mu that is repair rate and m bar by 1 by upon lambda that is failure rate, so, which will lead to this equation that unavailability is equal to lambda divided by lambda plus mu and that is also applicable for constant failure rate and repair rate that means, a component is having with uh, constant failure rate and repair rate. Okay. Now, we, here we will make some case studies. First of all, this is the first case, case 1. So, we will do some case studies here at this point. Number 1 is suppose we have a number of unrepairable components in series, number of unrepairable components in series. What do you mean by unrepairable components? Unrepairable components means those components uh, which are mm, which uh, cannot be uh, repaired or which need replaced if they suffer from failure. Okay. Now, we will uh, first analyze for a system having two components. This, this is component 1 and this is component 2. Okay. So, this m 1 r 1 uh, represent that mean time to failure and mean uh, time or 
time to failure or time to repair. Okay. Similarly, M2 R2 represents this uh, mean time to failure and mean time to repair. So, M1 should represent this mean time to failure and R1 should represent mean time to repair. Similarly, M2 and R2. Okay. Now, uh, since these components are not repairable, so R1 will not exist. R1, R will not exist. So, they can be uh, they should be replaced. So, there are many equipments uh, for example, uh, this fuse it is not repairable item. So, if it blows out blown out uh, then obviously, we need to replace the particular fuse. Okay. Similarly, we have many uh, components which are not repairable. Okay. Now, for those uh, equipment uh, let us consider that uh, this R C is represent R C is represent that reliability of the system. So, R C is basically represent the reliability of the whole system. Now, what is whole system? We have two components which creates a whole system. So, this makes a system. Okay. In this system, we have two components which are connected in series. Okay. Now, we need to determine that what would be the reliability of the whole system. In order to know that, we need to know what is the reliability of the individual system. So, let us consider the reliability of this component 1 is basically R 1 and reliability of component 2 is basically R 2. So, these two are reliability of components 1 and 2. Again, what is the definition of reliability? That you need to recall my previous lecture. Reliability is basically a function or a probability which uh, represents uh, a component uh, will, will not fail. Okay. So, it is the probability not to fail. So, you can go back and check my PBS day lecture. So, uh, this reliability is basically probability not to fail. Okay. Now, if we have two uh, components which are in series and if we consider that E is basically representing the event that the component I operates successfully. That means, that uh, component I will at healthy condition or will at up, the components will up. Okay. Now, as you know uh, for a series system, both the overall system will not fail if uh, both the systems are in healthy condition. Okay. So, for a series system, if we have two or multiple units or multiple components are in series, then obviously, you can understand from your uh, general knowledge that if any of the components fail, okay, the overall system will fail. Okay. Now, what is the condition that the whole system will operate at healthy condition? The condition is that each and every component of the whole system should operate uh, at healthy condition. Okay. So, here E 1 and E 2 basically represent uh, the event that the component 1 and 2 operates at healthy condition okay. and this this p is represent this probability and this is basically intersection as you know. So, if E 1 intersect this E 2 then only uh, you know that is basically the uh, overall the probability uh, of the overall system not to fail or the over it is the probability of the overall system to operate at healthy condition or at up condition. Okay. So, since in the probability theory uh, the intersection of these two event can be replaced by uh, this uh, multiplication of individual probability that is P E 1 multiplied by P E 2. P E 1 let us consider P E 1 is basically represent R 1 that is probability of this component 1 to operate at healthy condition and P 
P E 2 is basically represent uh, representing by this function R 2, okay, where uh, you know R 2 represents the uh, probability of component 2 uh, to operate at healthy condition. So, if, if we replace these two, so we will get R C is equal to nothing but R 1 multiplied by R 2. Okay. So, we got a product rule in the determination of the reliability of the overall system. Okay. So, now if we have a similar kind of n independent components which are in series, which are in series. Now, how to determine the system reliability? So, if we have, so in my last uh, you know slide we got that for two components the overall reliability of the system, two components are in series of course. So, overall uh, reliability of the system is R 1 multiplied by R 2. So, if we have three components it will be R C is equal to R 1 R 2 multiplied by R 3 and so on. So, if we have n number of system the overall reliability of the uh, system will be R C is equal to R 1 R 2 dot dot R n. So, which is represented by this product rule that is product of R i. Okay. Now, this product rule or chain rule of reliability is applicable only for when we have n number of components which are connected in series and they are not repairable. Okay. And of course, uh, since the, this they represent this probability, so they are fraction and that is why this overall system reliability is less than equal to a minimum value of this R i. Okay. So, this we will also explain with further example in uh, one of my slides. Now, we have case 2, second case, when we have repairable components are in series, when we have two or more number of components which are repairable and they are connected in series. So, what would be the uh, reliability or how do you analyze or assess the reliability of the system. Okay. Now, for two independent, now we will of course, here uh, study for two components and uh, if you know that what should be this reliability um, function uh, for two components uh, system which are connected in series and they are repairable, then you will be obviously understand how would be uh, the generalized expression for reliability for such kind of system having n number of components. Okay. Now, uh, we will study uh, with two component, two independent and repairable components are in series. Now, here we will try to find out the availability of the system, okay, which is representing the steady state probability of success or the reliability or it is the probability of uh, having uh, the system in operation or in healthy condition. Okay. So, here A C is basically representing the availability of overall system, A 1 is basically representing this availability of this component 1 and A 2 is representing availability of the component. Okay. Now, as you know for two component systems, so suppose this is component 1 and this is component 2. So, when we will have uh, both the overall system available or uh, in operational, when both the components are in operational. Okay. So, for uh, more components are in series, for series connection, um, when a particular unit consisting of n number of components would be operated uh, at healthy condition, when all the components uh, of the system uh, are in healthy condition. So, both the uh, components are to be healthy, then only the system would be healthy. So, the availability of the whole system is equal to A 1 multiplied by A 2 that is availability of the uh, component 1 and availability of the component 2. Okay. All right. Now, let us consider that m 1 is basically mean time to failure of component 1 and m 2 is basically mean time to failure of component 2. 
similarly r 1 bar so this bar represent this mean time. Okay. So, this bar represents mean bar represents mean value. Okay. Similarly, r bar is representing that uh, mean time to repair for component 1 and r 2 bar is representing mean time to repair for component 2. And this m cis bar and r cis bar they represent the mean time to failure for the overall system and mean time to repair for the overall system which consists of this component 1 and component 2 connected in series. Okay. Now, as we have seen the definition this availability is the fraction of time this component one particular component will be in healthy condition. So, A 1 will representing this M 1 divided by uh, R 1 bar plus M 1 bar. So, this is the fraction of time the component 1. So, this will represent the fraction of time the component 1 is in healthy condition. Okay. Similarly, A 2 is representing the component uh, the fraction of time the component 2 is in healthy condition which is equal to m 2 bar divided by r 2 bar plus m 2 bar which is nothing but the ratio of m t t f divided by m t t f plus m t t r. Okay. So, which already we have seen. So, the availability of the system which is product of this a 1 and a 2 we can got we can uh, got the expression for that that is equal to this m 1 uh, bar divided by r 1 plus m 1 bar multiplied by m 2 bar divided by uh, r 2 bar plus m 2 bar. Okay. Now, we will try to determine the average frequency of the system failure average frequency of the system failure this is something an important concept that one should understand. The average frequency of the system failure is the sum of the average frequency of the component 1 failing given that component 2 is in healthy condition plus average frequency of component 2 failing while component 1 is healthy condition. So, there are two conditions one is uh, component one is healthy and component two is under repair under repair and there is another condition that component one is under repair and component two is at healthy. So, both will drive to uh, this failure of the system, failure of the system assuming that we ignore the simultaneous failure of both the components which probability would be of course, less. Okay. So, uh, the, is this overall system will fail. Uh, when this component was in uh, component 1 is in healthy condition and component 2 is uh, under repair or it is uh, at faulty condition. And uh, second case is when component 1 is under repair and component 2 is operated at healthy condition. Okay. So, overall this frequency of the failure of the system is basically as you know this uh, this basically representing that availability of this component 2 multiplied by the failure frequency of the component 1. So, this correspond to uh, this case where this your uh, uh, component 2 is in healthy condition and component 1 is under repair. Similarly, this is the case where uh, this component 1 is at healthy condition and uh, component 2 is under repair. So, this correspond to this case. 
Okay. So, this basically gives you the frequency of this uh, particular case and this basically gives the frequency of this particular case. Okay. And if you sum up these two, then we will get the overall or average frequency of the system failure. Okay. Now, A 2 is basically the fraction of time this uh, component 2 is available and during this period, uh, if you multiply this uh, failure frequency of component 1. So, you will get this failure uh, frequency for this particular condition that is condition 2. Similarly, this basically represents this uh, availability of this component 1 and this failure of this component 2. If you uh, multiply these two, this correspond to this condition when uh, component 1 is in healthy and component 2 will be under repair and their summation is basically representing the total or average frequency of the system failure. Okay. So, once we got that, we know this uh, expressions for A 2 uh, in from the last slide that is this and we got the expression for A 1. Similarly, F 1, F 2 expressions we can also get because they are uh, frequency. So, they are basically F 1 should bar will be equal to 1 upon m 1 bar plus r 1 bar. So, which is 1 upon this uh, 1 upon t 1 bar which is representing this time cycle for component 1. So, so as this f 2. Okay. So, f 2 will be equal to 1 upon t 2 bar which is equal to 1 upon m 2 bar plus r 2 bar. Now, once you know that, once you know that uh, you put this this values to uh, this expression, this expression and we will get this expression. Okay. We will get this expression, where this is basically uh, f 1 bar and this is basically a 2 that is availability of the component 2, this is basically f 2 bar and this is basically your a 1. So, we know that uh, this is basically uh, a 1 f 2 plus a 2 f 1 uh, which is we got uh, from the last slide and we put these values. Okay. Now, we also know the availability of the system, availability of the system is basically equal to m c s bar divided by m c s bar plus r c s bar, where m c s bar is basically representing the mean time to failure of the overall system okay. and r c s bar is basically representing the mean time to repair for the overall system. So, m c s bar is basically mean time to failure for whole system. Okay. Similarly, R C S bar is basically sorry mean time to repair for whole system. Okay. So, this we can write uh, this is basically nothing but equal to 1 upon T C S that is we can write M C S divided by capital T C S where this uh, T C S bar is basically representing the mean uh, cycle time, mean cycle time. Okay. So, we can also write it as equal to M C S bar multiplied by F C S bar, which is represented over there. Okay. All right. Now, we have already seen the expression of A C S we got by multiplying this availability 1 and availability 2 that is this equation and we get uh, this F C S this equation. So, if we put this value of F C S at this expression, we will get this uh, expression for availability uh, of the overall system. Now, we will equate both the uh, equations, one is this by uh, putting this value of expression for F C S at this particular equation and uh, left hand side we will equate with this equation. Okay. So, if you do this, then you will get uh, the 
expression for mean time to failure of the overall system as a function of m 1 bar and m 2 bar, which are mean time to failure of system 1 or component 1 and mean time to failure of component 2. Okay. All right. Now, uh, similarly, uh, if we have n number of components are in series, which are also repairable, then the mean time to failure that is m t t f of the overall system is equal to 1 upon 1 by m 1 bar plus 1 by m 2 bar and so on. Okay. Now, as we know 1 upon m 1 bar is basically lambda 1, where we assume that the component 1 is having a constant failure rate. So, as the other components that means, with the assumption that each of the components are having a having constant failure rate respectively. So, we can replace this 1 upon m by lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3. So, this will lead to have this equation as equal to 1 by lambda 1 plus lambda 2 plus lambda n. Okay. And that is basically uh, representing 1 by uh, that is basically representing this mean time to failure. Now, we can alternatively write it as summation of this lambda 1 plus lambda 2 plus up to lambda n will be equal to 1 upon this m cis, where this m cis bar represents the mean time to failure for the overall system. So, which is nothing but lambda cis. Okay. So, here lambda cis is the failure rate of the overall system. Now, at this point we got this relationship that failure rate of the overall system is equal to sum of the individual failure rate of all components when a system is having n number of uh, repairable components are in series. Okay. So, if you know that they are, uh, there is a, a system which is having n number of components uh, which are in series and all the components are repairable then you can find out the failure rate of the whole system simply by summing up the individual failure rate of the components. Okay. Similarly, this mean time to repair that is m t t r can be obtained as this. Okay. So, this you can get how to get this? I will give some hint. So, this r c is basically representing mean time to repair for a system having n number of components which are connected in series and all the components are repairable. Okay. So, for that mean time to repair you can find out R C S with this expression. Now, how to find this? So, in order to find this uh, let us go back to this expression. So, this is basically availability of the system. Now, this is the expression of the availability of the system. Now, for that system what would be the unavailability function? So, if this unavailability of the system is represented by unavailability of the whole system is represented by u c s, then as we know u c s is equal to 1 minus a c s. Okay. So, as we know that a c s is equal to this, so we can write it as u c s is equal to 1 minus m 1 bar m 2 bar divided by m 1 plus r 1 m 2 plus r 2. Okay. So, we got this. Now, we will write it here that unavailability of the system is equal to 1 minus availability that is m 1 bar m 2 bar divided by m 1 bar plus m 2 r 1 bar multiplied by m 2 bar plus r 2 bar. Okay. All right. So, this we can further analyze. So, if we simplify this, then we will get m 1 bar plus r 1 bar 
m 2 bar plus r 2 bar and here we will get m 1 bar r 2 and m 2 bar r 1 plus r 1 r 2 okay, minus m 1 bar m 2 bar. So, this this will get cancelled out. Okay. So, what we will get? We will get m 1 bar 2 bar plus m 2 bar r 1 plus r 1 r 2 divided by m 1 bar plus r 1 bar m 2 bar plus r 2 bar. Okay. All right. So, this is the uh, expression for uh, unavailability of the system. Now, uh, similar to this previous one, you know that this is the you know failure frequency, this is the failure frequency and availability period is basically m c is by uh, this this. So, unavailability of the system will be equal to u c is equal to r c s bar divided by m c s plus r c s. So, which is which will give you r c s bar multiplied by f c s bar. Okay. So, we can write is here u c s is equal to r c s bar multiplied by f c s bar. Okay. Where we know the expression for f c s bar. So, this is given here, this is given here. So, we just replace this expression as r c s bar multiplied by m 2 divided by this and m 1 divided by this which will lead to m 1 plus m 2 divided by these two uh, unit. So, I can write it as m 1 plus m 2 divided by m 1 plus r 1 multiplied by m 2 plus r 2. Okay. So, this equates with these equations. Okay. You can see the denominator of both the sides are same. So, one, one can replace it. So, we can write it as r c s is equal to m 1 bar r 2 plus m 2 bar r 1 plus r 1 r 2 divided by m 1 plus m 2. Okay. Now, we know that m 1 bar is equal to 1 upon lambda 1 which is uh, representing the constant failure rate of this component 1 and m 2 bar is equal to 1 by lambda 2. So, if you put this here then what we will get r 2 bar multiplied by 1 by lambda 1 plus r 1 bar multiplied by 1 by lambda 2 plus r 1 r 2 divided by 1 by lambda 1 plus 1 by lambda 2 which will give you r 1 bar lambda 1 plus r 2 bar lambda 2 plus r 1 r 2 lambda 1 lambda 2 divided by lambda 1 plus lambda 2. Now, this component which is uh, multiplication of r 1 r 2 lambda 1 lambda 2 when you have this uh, multiplication of lambda with r. So, since this uh, all are fraction and if you multiply these four fractions it will lead to almost negligible value. So, we can ignore it if we ignore it we get we get this r c is approximately equal to r 1 bar lambda 1 plus r 2 bar lambda 2 divided by lambda 1 lambda 2. 
So, this gives you this last equations that is this okay. and for n number of components of course, so this gives you uh, approximately equal to summation of lambda i r i divided by summation of lambda i, where i is varying from 1 to n if you have n number of components. So, this gives you uh, R c which is mean uh, value of uh, mean time to repair M T T R. So, this basically gives you M T T R of the overall system. So, we can find out how would be the M T T R of the overall system. Now, this is our case 3, where we have unrepairable components are in parallel. Okay. So, previously we got two cases, we studied two cases, case one was uh, when we have n number of components are in series and they are not repairable. Case two was when we have n number of components, they are in series and they are repairable. Okay. Now, here we have in case three, we have n number of components, they are in parallel and they are not repairable. Okay. So, this gives this uh, you know two components which are in parallel and they are not repairable. So, similar to this uh, you know the first case, we need to determine the reliability of the system. Now, when we have a parallel system uh, with two or more number of components, uh, then the overall system will fail when all the components simultaneously fail. Okay. So, that is the general knowledge that we have. If we have uh, you know parallel system having n number of components, then the overall system will fail when all the components simultaneously fail. Okay. So, here the failure function or unreliability function will follow the product rule. Okay. So, the system unreliability is basically represented by uh, probability of this event where e 1 bar e 1 complement is basically represents the event that component 1 fails okay. and e 2 bar basically represent an event so when uh, events uh, for component 2 fails and their intersection will give you the unreliability function of the system. Okay. So, q c is equal to uh, P E 1 uh, complement P E 2 complement. Okay. So, P E 1 complement we can represent it uh, as Q 1 and P E 2 represent by Q 2, where Q 1 is basically unreliability function of component 1 and Q 2 is unreliability function of component 2. And we can understand that uh, relationship of this unreliability and reliability. So, Q 1 can be replaced by 1 multiplied by R 1 and Q 2 can be replaced by 1 multiplied by R 2. Okay. All right. So, here uh, as you know this uh, unreliability function they will follow this product rule. So, I can note down here. So, in this particular case unreliability function unreliability function will follow product rule. Okay, will follow the product rule. Okay, so that is why this overall uh, unreliability of the overall system will be equal to product of the unreliability function of each and every component, okay, which is equal to 1 minus this reliability function of each and every component. Okay. So, overall system reliability will be equal to 1 minus this Q c, where Q c is the unreliability function of the system. So, which is equal to 1 minus uh, this Q c will follow this product rule that is Q 1, Q 2, Q 3 up to Q m where we assume that we have m number of independent components are in parallel. Uh, so, this will give you this product of this q i where i value vary from 1 to m. 
Okay. Now, in terms of reliability function also we can find out this is equal to 1 minus uh, this q 1 is replaced by 1 minus r 1, q 2 is replaced by 1 minus r 2, q 3 is replaced by 1 minus r 3 and so on. Okay. So, we can find out the overall reliability function like this. Okay. Now, we will have this another case study that is uh, case 4, where we have we have m number of components or we have a number of components which are repairable, individual components are repairable, all components are repairable and they are in parallel okay. and we need to uh, find out or we need to assess the reliability of the overall system. Now, here the difference is that we have repairable components are in parallel. Now, previously we have seen that when we had n number of components which are connected in series and there are repairable, the availability of the overall system follows the product rule. Now, in the last uh, case we have seen that when we have uh, m number of components which are in parallel and they follow this uh, uh, this product rule of the unreliability function. So, similarly here the unavailability of the overall system which also represent the probability of the failure of the system will follow this product rule. Okay. That means, the system will be unavailable when both the components when we have two independent components are in parallel when both the components are will uh, unavailable. Okay. So, this basically represents the system will be unavailable when both the components are unavailable. Okay. Now, we know that u 1 is basically representing that 1 minus a 1 that is availability of the 1 and uh, we know this a 1 is basically equal to uh, m 1 divide m 1 bar plus divided by m 1 bar plus r 1 bar. Now, m 1 bar we can replace by lambda 1. So, this is equal to 1 by lambda 1 plus r 1 bar. So, which is basically representing this this equal to 1 divided by 1 plus lambda 1 r 1 okay, r 1 bar. So, if we take you know 1 minus a 1 which will give you lambda 1 multiplied by r 1 bar divided by 1 plus lambda 1 r 1 bar which is the unavailability of the component 1. Similarly, unavailability of the component 2 we can got like this and the unavailability of the system will be the product of these two unavailability of the system uh, component 1 and unavailability of the component 2. Now, similar to previous case 2, we can find out this average frequency of the system failure. So, when the system will fail, when uh, one is uh, component 2 is unavailable and the frequency of failure of this component 1 and uh, when the component 1 was unavailable and the frequency of failure of uh, component 2. So, previously it was the availability and here we have unavailability multiplied by the frequency of the failure of individual component. So, this will lead to the case when uh, uh, component 2 was unavailable and failure frequency of component 1 and this will lead to uh, the second component this will lead to the case where uh, component 1 was unavailable and multiplied by the frequency of the failure of the 2. Now, we got this u 1 and e 2 expressions from here and simply we will put it and we know this expressions for f 1 and f 2 as well. So, we get this relationship as f c is equal to this. Okay. All right. Now, as we know this unavailability of the overall system is equal to R C s bar divided by this uh, overall uh, mean time cycle that is T C s bar, which is equal to R C s bar multiplied by F C s bar. Okay. 
Now, we already know that what is the expression of u c s uh, that is this expression and uh, if we put this expression over here just by uh, replacing this f c s bar then we will get some equation and this equation. So, this f c s bar we will get from here and we will put it to here and this will give you one expression for u c s that is unavailability of the system and that equation will equate with this equation okay. and if you equate then you will get the relationship of R c s as a function of R 1 R 2 bar this is actually R 1 bar R 2 bar divided by R 1 bar plus R 2 bar. Okay. So, here you get this uh, mean time. So, this is basically m t t r of the overall whole system whole system which is equal to you can see uh, in, in the numerator it is it will follow this pi or product rule. So, which will be equal to r i and the denominator will be this uh, summation. Okay. All right. Now, this, this so this needs to be verified whether it works for m number of system. Well, you should verify it. Okay, and unavailability of the system which is come ca can be find found out from this, and uh, this average time to uh, you know failure is if once you get similarly m c s bar also you can find out. Okay, so how to find out this m c s bar? Uh, you can see that uh, unavailability function is given over here uh, that is this. So, if you write it here, so unavailability of the system is equal to lambda 1 r 1 bar divided by 1 plus lambda 1 r 1 multiplied by lambda 2 r 2 bar divided by 1 plus lambda 2 r 2 bar. So, this we got from here. Okay. Now, this is basically representing this overall unavailability. So, availability will be equal to that is A c s will be equal to 1 minus this. So, this will be lambda 1 r 1 bar lambda 2 r 2 bar divided by 1 plus lambda 1 r 1 bar 1 plus lambda 2 r 2 bar. Okay. Now, we can uh, simplify it like this will give you 1 plus lambda 1 r 1 bar 1 plus lambda 2 r 2 bar. So, this and this will cancel out. So, this will give you 1 plus lambda 1 r 1 bar plus lambda 2 r 2 bar. In the denominator it will be 1 plus lambda 1 r 1 bar. 1 plus lambda 2 r 2 bar. Okay. Now, this is what the availability of the system okay. and we know that availability of the system is basically m c s bar multiplied by f c s bar okay. and we know this expression of f c s from here that it is equal to lambda 1 lambda 2 multiplied by this. So, once you put it here so, this will give you m c s bar which is let me check again this f c s bar is equal to lambda 1 multiplied by lambda 2 r 1 plus r 2 and the denominator was 1 plus lambda 1 r 1 bar and 1 plus lambda 2 r 2 bar. So, this if you equate with this expression that this denominators are identical. So, you get this value of m c s bar as 1 plus lambda 1 r 1 bar plus lambda 2 r 2 bar divided by lambda 1 lambda 2 r 1 bar plus r 2. Okay. So, this is the expression that 
I have shown in the last slide. This is how to derive this. Okay, all right. And uh, as we know, one upon uh, m c s bar, which gives this uh, failure rate of the overall system. So you can find out this. This is the failure rate of the overall system. Okay. So I'll stop today at this point. We'll continue next lecture. Thank you.